Hey guys, my patrons voted that they wanted to learn how to do glow effects, and I am going to show you guys a bunch of ways to do glow effects in today's alcohol marker tutorial. So please keep watching. So in a recent Patreon poll, my patrons requested that I cover several marker topics and glow effects was one of them. So I've got a cute little thumbnail with an outline of what I want to cover. And today I am going to sketch it out and ink it in time lapse. So I hope you guys will enjoy. Now that this has been all penciled, we're going to use a marker and waterproof pen. This is a Sailor Mitchell Ida. It's one of my three pens of choice for this sort of project. And we're going to ink this. Now, if you're not familiar with the Mitchell Ida, it is a double-sided brush pen, which it makes it ideal for this sort of inking. So the inks have been completed. I'm going to let them cure for 24 hours and then we're gonna go ahead and get inky with some alcohol markers and some alcohol inks. So this has had a chance to dry overnight. The next step is I'm gonna use a nice soft white eraser from using a Creative Mark white stroke to remove all this graphite. So everything's been erased. I've gone ahead and brushed it off with a nice clean brush and I'm gonna go ahead and remove it from my mixed media pad. Ta-da! And next, we're going to start using some Frisket. So the materials we're going to need for this mask are masking Frisket. I'm using Graphics Masking Frisket Film. You can find a link in the description below. Rubbing alcohol. You're going to want some paper towels, which I need to grab a permanent marker, ideally a fine tip, this will work, an X-Acto blade, and if you have them, needlepoint scissors, which I do not, but I do have some small scissors to sort of help me along with this. And what we're going to do is, you can use a light table for this, but I find that this is so translucent, it doesn't, you don't really need it. I am going to trace, trying to be as cheap as possible because we're only going for Kara. 
So actually, if you have some washi tape, that is also a big help because we can tape everything down. So washi tape or masking tape, just a low tack tape. Tape things down in place and that way it won't shift while we're doing it. Really love this washi tape dispenser I got from Muji and you guys can check that out in I think my Muji haul video. All right, so I am going to quickly trace the outline of Kara onto my masking frisket. including the cutting edge, or rather the, the hard edge of the paper. And gently, we're gonna remove our mask from our illustration. And gently remove our masking tape as well, set that aside. And then you can either use your X-Acto or your scissors and you can begin cutting this out from the rest of the sheet. So we're gonna wanna use the rubbing alcohol to remove this outline because Sharpie marker is alcohol solvent and that means if you use spray inks or a Copic Wide on top of it, it's going to reactivate your Sharpie ink and it's gonna cause some smearing into your image. And this is a really easy fix. If you don't have rubbing alcohol around, you could use colorless blender. It's not really a big deal one way or the other, but rubbing alcohol is super cheap and super easy to find. So I just use that. And you wanna get most of the black off just so that it doesn't end up on your image. And I'm gonna let the rubbing alcohol evaporate before I apply it. You don't really need to, it's just, you know, preference on my end. Now I'm going to go ahead and begin applying my frisket. And in other tutorials, I've mentioned some techniques for getting your frisket down, um, including cutting it just in case some shifting happens, cutting kind of helps with that. The problem with cutting it is that ink can seep underneath. There we go. Sometimes I can get it a little easier than others. What I have found helpful though, and I may not be able to do it on this one because it's such a big piece, is I have found that cutting the paper and applying it in smaller sections is easier. Of course, there would be a hair on the paper. Um, it's easier for me. And I mentioned this in my Intermediate Alcohol Marker Artist gift guide, but if you, like myself, find frisket hard to see, you can use Japanese tone. All right, it's a decent application, not the best. And see how it got all shifted? Even though I was being so careful. Let's see if I can if I can get it again. Let's try it without talking this time. Not perfect, but much better. And I did that by aligning the bottom, which still has the paper on, and then applying the top. It did, of course, get shifted a little bit. Now we want to burnish the edges so eat ink can't seep underneath. And then we're going to apply our best, our first layer, but I'm gonna swatch a couple of things. Let's see. Maybe I should have done this on her as well, because I do want a light color. Or there's something I can swatch with.
So I am actually using all custom Copic wides, at least for right now. And I wish I'd been smart and done this on her as well. And then we would have gotten some really nice effects, but I wasn't thinking about it at the time. I got distracted. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to apply a wash of BV00. Basically, I'm going to do it all in one direction and then I'm going to go in the other. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut and check in with you guys after I've done that. So I'm going to do two types of glows in the background. I'm going to do a mask glow and then I'm going to do a glow made with an alcohol reaction. So for the mask glow, we have a couple of options for this. We can use the frisket and apply it or we can use uh, masking fluid and apply that as well. And uh, if you guys are interested in more masking methods, I actually did a tutorial for my backers on Patreon that they have access to. So if you are a backer, please check that out. Um, and if you're interested in seeing that video, you can become a backer, but I also wrote about it at natosuit.blogspot.com. So for this, we are going to need a synthetic brush and we're also going to need some brush soap. And I have tutorials here on the channel on using masking fluid. So I recommend that you check those out. All right, so I've got brush soap in my brush. I'm going to open my masking fluid. I'm going to try to thinly apply circles of masking. Now, I need to leave room for the other type of blend I want to do. Otherwise, you guys know me, I would totally also do splatters. Some coming from behind her head. And then I'm gonna give it a chance to dry. All right, so our frisket has had a chance to dry. Oh no, I lied to you. This one is still wet over here, so I need to give it even more time to dry. So, next Ill Lily, I'm going to use eggplant. And we gotta go slow over that masking fluid because it's like a little speed bump. And I'm actually not intending on covering the whole thing. This is about where I'm gonna stop. And I'm gonna do some much more saturated at the top, like so. And then we're going to do a little bit of the blend out with our prior color. What is that? BB00. And then we're gonna make a big old mess and hopefully get a softer transition. Actually, I wanna try and get another layer on there. Okay, big old mess, maybe softer transition with BV01 in a spray bottle. Let me get it going because it's been, there we go. And as you can see, it's lightening that up. I'm gonna give this a chance to dry because if I keep working wet onto wet, it's going to seep underneath my adhesive and start to pool. And finally, I'm gonna use that rubbing alcohol held at a distance. And get it just all over the place. No, I'm, I'm aiming for the bottom. So I kinda want a light transition and we'll see if we can get that. I may have to go in with the BV01 again and just kind of lighten that up. Okay, so let's give this another old spursaroo. All right, and then we gotta let this dry. So patience is a virtue. 
And then before I remove the mask, I wanna do a different kind of glow. We're gonna use rubbing alcohol and we're gonna do a reaction glow. So by just dripping it onto the paper, and I wanna be careful not to oversaturate. You can get a really easy, kind of nice glow effect. And you can use a colorless blender if you prefer. If you have a problem, let's say, with uh, using rubbing alcohol for whatever reason. I mean, if we're being honest here, if your concerns are the archival qualities of this paper, by using alcohol inks, you've already negated that. And one of the reasons I'm not using colorless blender is it actually has some glycerin in it. It has things in it that make it a little bit tacky to the touch when dry, whereas rubbing alcohol does not, just will dry the heck out of your hands. So. And unfortunately, based on the top of, type of eyedropper I was getting, I was only getting a certain size of drops. So I am going to use the nozzle and just fling rubbing alcohol. If I spray it, it'll get too fine a mist and I want like some medium sized drops. And what's cool about this too, is you get kind of a layering and I'll zoom in in a bit so y'all can see it, but you get kind of a layered effect. So before we remove our masks and check out the end results of all our spritzing and spraying, we do need to clean up our work surface. So rubbing alcohol and paper towels to the rescue yet again. You can also do what I often like to do and spritz it down and then put a sheet of paper on top of it to capture that sort of frame. Nice, fresh, clean again work surface. Now we can go ahead and we're gonna start by removing our frisket. And we're just gonna pull and peel and try not to tug too much and try not to let it get stuck on the paper. So rolling it up onto itself could be a solution. You guys will notice that I have a little seepage. I'm actually not concerned about that at all. And I also have some areas that didn't get fully covered. That is okay because I've got close to the colors I need and it's gonna be enough to kinda hide my scent and I can even pick up some color from my masking fluid areas to help ease that transition. And I also have a plant. We're just trying to fool the eye so it doesn't notice the areas that didn't get masked properly not really attempting to do a full cover-up job, just enough. And it seems that my rubbing alcohol didn't have quite the fact effect I wanted, not quite as drastic. So I'm gonna grab a colorless blender and begin lightening some of those areas up. Now, those are our background glows anyway, so they're not gonna be nearly as intense as our foreground glows. And I may have to go over these areas multiple times in order to get the effect I want, but Really, I'm not going to know for sure until I remove my first kit. And then I'll have a better idea. So I have a masking for skit pickup. You can use your fingers if you like. And then 
this might have so much alcohol ink on it that I may not want to come out clean. I want to get all of that frisket up. So I'll do another one for you guys on camera and then I'm going to do these in time lapse. Now I wish we had done more of the masking fluid glows because I really thought we were going to get a better glow effect with the uh, rubbing alcohol, a better reaction than I did. I mean, it's not a big deal. I'm softening the edges just a smidge with a colorless blender. Just, I like the glow effect from the masking fluid a lot better. And then we are going to use BV Double Zero. And I'm gonna do a pre-layer of shading. And this is pretty close to what I use to shade Kara's skin anyway. And I'm just doing this to sort of tone her skin and hair. Well, tone everything so that it looks like it actually fits into the background. So she doesn't look like she was literally masked <laughs> the way we did. And I'm going to do her skin on top of this, like all the normal coloring on top of this. I just want this as sort of a base layer. And sometimes, I will admit, sometimes this works out and sometimes it does not. And I know some people, when they're recording their tutorials, will do a demo version for themselves so they can figure it out. And I think that is commendable. I don't do, I don't do that. I fly by the seat of my pants. She says I don't really have time to do multiple versions of the same illustration. And it's just no time for that, so. That's okay, because then I make mistakes, and then we learn together how to fix those mistakes, and hopefully I become a stronger artist, and you become a stronger artist, and everybody leaves happy, and I help dispel any myths people might have about, you know, you have to get it right on the first shot. I know there's some people who think that, and I feel bad that they think that, and I don't want to contribute. Not that you can control what people think, but... I don't want to be an artist who contributes to that myth. So I'm going to do the rest of this in time lapse. Next, I'm going to use eggplant in her hair since Kara has darker hair. And you'll notice that I tried to keep the texture of most of the materials. Um, it's not a big deal if I don't. Ooh, that might be too dark. Might have to reserve that for the darkest areas. I definitely want to use something in her hair that's going to help tone it. And she does have really dark, well, she has red brown hair. So I do kind of want to make sure I use a dark enough color, but I don't know if I want to go this dark. That's okay. We'll try it and we'll see. And maybe it'll turn out and maybe it won't and it'll be a learning experience and we'll all walk away richer. Not walk away Richard, but walk away richer. I definitely want to leave room for her hair highlights too. So the shading on her hair might be kind of different from what you guys are used to. We'll see. Okay, I want to leave sort of a glow, a halo around 
where this one is. And I'm gonna leave a halo kind of just around her hair in general. And you'll notice I left kind of a halo on her coat for the most part as well. I find that sort of helps imply form and mass. So I could, if I wanted to, I could leave it like this. I think it looks pretty cute. Um, this could be a finished illustration. I'm going to go ahead and grab a photo of this so I have reference and then I'm gonna start swatching colors. So something I definitely want to do is I wanna make these lights look like colored lights. So I've got soft pastel versions of every color and I'm going to do a dot in the center and then use, let me zoom it zoom, use my colorless blender to sort of blend it out, giving it a, what now guys? A glow effect. <laughs> it's one way to do a glow for sure. And I've covered some other ways so far. Gonna do a lot of different types of glows today. A lot of different types of glow effects since you guys. Well, since my patrons voted and the number one Copic tutorial or marker tutorial they wanted to see was glows, then followed by skin tones. So gonna get to work doing skin tones soon as also. All right, so that yellow is so light, I don't even need. In fact, I'm gonna wanna grab a warmer yellow. Don't even need to blend it out because it is already pretty, pretty pale. Okay, I'll put a warmer yellow, or a more saturated yellow in there and blend that out a little bit. And then I have a green. So it's kind of like a Christmas colored lights sort of winter scene. Originally they were gonna be fireflies, but I do a lot of firefly stuff, don't I guys? So many fireflies, so why not something a little more timely anyway, since fireflies are not really don't really like cold weather that would bring about a jacket like that. And then let's use these lighter colors on some of these background glows. And then I'm also going to do, go ahead and put some of that yellow in. some local color in. Blend it out just a little bit. And I'm not really trying to blend it out so much as I'm just trying to soften it a little bit. Because as you guys know, I'm going to do other colors on top of it. And then I'm gonna imply there's some light maybe coming from the front. And like I told you guys, I'm going to end up coloring over this anyway. So I do need to hold on to these and that way I can reinforce the colors I chose. in case they get too blended out. Though, to be honest, this is really, doing it like this is really fun. All right, so I want to also do some glow effect on her face. And I'm gonna mostly just go with yellow and mostly on her eyes and on the apples of her cheeks. Okay, so since we are working with kind of a different color palette, I've introduced, I'm possibly gonna start with E00, which is what I normally start with as my lightest color. Um, but I may opt instead to start with E51, thus implying 
the dark. And then I also picked up Peach Bellini, Ranger Peach Bellini, and filled a Copic sketch with it. And it's a really nice color. It is actually a little bit nicer than E21, but it shades nicely with E21. And then, oops, for the darkest shade with this, I think E34. And then I do freckles with E13 and um, blush with R02. And I also need to go grab T-Rose. T-Rose or Shell. And Shell would be a Blick Studio color. Blick Studio brush. Told you guys I use them all the time. So what I'm actually gonna do is I am going to start, I think, with a base. Let's go ahead and just start with what we know and then work darker. Cause I usually do a base coat to sort of saturate the paper and prepare it for darker coats. So I think I'll go ahead and do a base coat with what I normally do, which is E00. And then I will work my way darker. So this is another way to do glows. So you'll note I left her cheek unfilled and I'm leaving parts of her nose unfilled. Actually did myself a big favor because her face is the only part of her that isn't, that is bare skin. So face and ear are all I have to think about with this. So everything is actually pretty um, discreet color regions. And I'm gonna grab a piece of scratch paper because there's enough sticky residue on my paper that I think it's gonna cause smearing. So just use a piece of scratch cardstock. And now I'm gonna go in with E51. And remember, we can always blend out with our lighter color, E00. And maybe I'll leave like almost half of her face and I'll start blending. Let me zoom in for you guys. I know it's hard to see. So I'll blend that out with E00. Remember, we are in pursuit of glow. And I think we're actually doing a good job. So I'm gonna eat, leave the apple of her cheek light. I may not even really need to do too much in terms of using my blue violet to shade this again. All right, it's looking pretty good. Getting some nice color bounce. a bit. Then I'm going to do another layer of E51. And just a reminder, this is a mixed media paper. So it is heavier than most marker papers because I like to do a lot of layers and I really like a nice smooth blend. Okay. Then we're going to grab our custom marker, Peach Bellini. And I've never worked with this color, but I think before today, but I think it is a keeper. That's why I do custom markers. And under the nose. And then I need to do my, and I should have done my blushes already because they're gonna desaturate this color, which I mean, isn't a problem necessarily since we are, you know, doing a night scene. And we're gonna start with E93 and blend out with shell. And that'll hopefully help with some of the desaturation. And underneath the nose and on the inside of the ear, Kind of gives it like a lively effect. And then, of course, it's a cold day and cold days mean red noses and red cheeks, right? So we're gonna do lots 
of color. And I also like doing pink above the eyelids as well. And then we really only need to blend out a little bit with shell because we lost a little bit of our, what are we working on today again, guys? Glow, we lost a little bit of our glow. And I'm gonna grab a colorless blender and push some of that color back. And I may have gone a little too far, so I'll put a little bit of it forward. Markers is, for me, markers is a lot about push and pull, give and take. It's like a relationship me and my markers have. Do it a little bit more under the eye. And then I wanna grab RO2. I definitely want her to have kind of a pinky nose since it's cold. If I was being realistic, I'd draw like a little snot globet coming out because <laughs> that's what happens to me. I get cold and my nose starts running. But that's really pretty so far. I'm pretty pleased with these tutorials. I usually know what I'm doing, but sometimes I have to wonder at myself. So it's always reassuring. So I'm grabbing Peach Bellini again. It's always reassuring when I can be like, yeah, see, I do know what I'm talking about. Especially since I've been doing so much watercolor. Now we lost a lot of that purple. And I may have to use something darker than BB00, Dublizero, Dublized. And we're going to reestablish that. Oh, it kind of makes me want to just like not even bother with the darker skin tones. I'm gonna actually leave the area under her nose as is. Don't really, well, maybe just the nostril. There we go. Yeah, yeah! Can you tell when I make art I like and get really energetic? Then a little bit of E34. Around the nose and here. So basically, any shadows that I don't want to be desaturated, like inside the ear, I'm gonna cover with this. But I'm actually gonna use a much lighter hand than I normally do. And then I'm gonna start with a base of her freckles. That'll be good because her freckles would show up in our glow, but would not necessarily be as dark as they were in the shadow. And I should probably find a darker BB. BB, 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 BB. So I am off camera swatching like all my BBs because I want something a little bit darker than BB00. There we go, BB23. And then I can do her eyes. So with those eyes, I only want to really get the area away from the glow. And I also want to blend that out. And then I want to add just a little bit there. And also, zoop, whoop in. Bop, bop. And do pinks in the corner of her eye. And then I'm going to use light suntan and do, oh, these are nice and warm. And I might actually want to grab a darker brown to do some of her freckles too, because it's not quite standing out as much as I would like. But that is Kara Skin. Nice and um, a lot of nice warm colors going on in there. Um, I could probably 
reinforce the shadows a bit and that way we're gonna get more of a look like she's got a light source. I don't want it too harsh because it is a diffused light source. So I'm gonna put my skin tones away and we'll move on to her hair. So we have a few colors that I don't normally use for Kara's hair, but I don't wanna lose that. What are we working on again today, guys? Glow. So I grabbed a yellow orange and I've got, I've got YR14 caramel. Mm -mm -mm -mm. They're kind of competing, so I think I'm gonna go with caramel. And I'm gonna want a mid-brown, because I don't think walnut, walnut is a good, no, it's not a good mid-brown. So, whoa, whoa. Let's try E07 light mahogany. Yep, that'll be better. And then I've got, I've also got sepia which is, oh, Sienna, that makes sense. That might be a better, that might be a good interim color. Might just add a million colors tonight. And then we've got dark bark. So this is the order we're gonna do them in. So we're gonna do the same thing we did with the skin. I'm actually gonna start with the eyes. And I really wanna preserve the glow effect. So what I'm going to do, and I'm, I have not tried this before. So this could like completely turn out creepy children of the corny and that could just be a thing. So Kara's eyes are actually the same color as her hair for the most part. So we're going to do our first color YR14. We're going to blend the transition with Y00. And she's, yeah, she is looking a little creepy. That's okay. We're gonna unzoom in for you guys. We're gonna get this figured out. Trying to get it to look like a shine without it looking super duper creepy. So I'm gonna start to fill it in edge her pupil a little bit. I'm gonna switch over now a fair bit darker. And I'm only gonna do a little bit of it and I'm gonna blend and blend and blend and blend. See, markers are a lot like makeup. Blend, 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 blend. And then I'll let that dry and I'll start in on the hair. And I'm just going right over eggplant and I've got it close at hand so that I can reestablish that color if I need to. And I'm leaving, I am not coloring the whole thing, I'm leaving some left uncolored to imply very shiny sort of uh, a glow reflection in her hair because an effective glow technique means you utilize multiple techniques to really sell it. And I want you guys, I mean, I did use a couple of special tricks, nothing like, nothing super gimmicky, nothing that isn't useful in other scenarios. But a lot of this is just thinking about where my light source is, thinking about how my colors blend and working off of that. I do, I mean, I won't lie, I do like tricks and gimmicks to an extent, but I want it to be stuff that you don't need a lot of specialized materials to do. You don't need special stamps. You don't need like the special alignment tool or anything like that. I mean, a lot of people might consider alcohol markers to be a special tool, and they probably are to most normal non-artist people. And I suppose I could try doing a similar demonstration with water-based markers, um, except you would use water instead of rubbing alcohol. And there's probably some that would really work well with the technique and some that would really 
not work well. So we're gonna switch on over to Sienna. Sienna, will you focus? Thank you. Like, I bet you could get a really similar effect with Ecoline water-based watercolor markers and water because the dyes in them are very reactive. I bet you could get, in fact, I'm pretty sure in my field test video where I render a really, really cute mermaid with the Jane Davenport mer Port mermaid markers, uh, I was able to get sort of a glow effect. And you can also just draw in your glow by hand. You can also use color pencils, which depending on how I feel as we near the end of this piece, I may pull them out. Heck, I just swatched for an unboxing swatch. I just did uh, the Crayola gel artist markers. So they've got like an oil core, like real artist markers often do. Um, and I might just use those because I really liked them and it's easier than pulling out my other color pencils. After I do this layer, I'm gonna go back with that YR and blend some of this back. I do, I do like um, how sharp some of the color transitions are. I'm not trying to blend it to soften it, I just, realize that in some areas a mid-tone might be useful. I mean, I could even stop at this la uh, layer because that eggplant purple really did a nice job of darkening and desaturating. Might even skip that dark red. Right, so that's where we are so far. Got a little bit of bleed out over there. I'm going to go in with the colorless blender and push some of the colors back a little since I'm losing a little bit of my glow effect in some areas. And I'm gonna back in and reestablish some of those colors. Push and the pull. Okay, next is walnut. Right then we're gonna do the hair over here. And of course, definitely thinking about contrast. Always something I think about when I'm doing any sort of illustrative, illustrative art. All right, so let's grab eggplant again, or we could even go darker and go with slate. Hmm, actually, let's go with slate. And we'll just have to use slate sparingly. If you really want to make your glow effects pop, the way to do that, and I might do it with the background, is to put something really dark right by your light source, or something really light. So something really dark next to something that's being most affected by your light source. And then E49. Oh, her poor little side swoop thing is looking kind of chewed up. Let me see if I can find a way to get it to look a little more harmonious and less chewed up. All right, so looks like we've got some really nice glowy things going on, glowing on even. So I'm gonna go ahead and 
hopefully demonstrate. I'm partially, I'm trying to keep it kind of patchy so that it doesn't stand out too much. Although maybe we want it to stand out. Have to experiment and see. But I'm doing it kind of patchy to sort of ease my way in. Kind of darken some of the halos around our glows. Hopefully get those glowy effects to pop a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna get this area cleaned up and we're gonna start on her mouth. So to begin with the inside of her mouth, other than her teeth, which are already kind of handled, would be darker. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in to begin with. Y'all like how I also <laughs> go in and change some stuff on the skin like, mm. And then I'm going to fill it in with Blick Light Peach, which is gonna push some of that purple back, by the way. And then I'm gonna start putting in R22, which is Light Prawn. Blend that out a little bit and then go into R29, which is pretty dark, to be fair. Heck, maybe I should have done the whole mouth with lipstick red, because that looked pretty good. That's okay. Always slipping in there, adding some extra color, right? Okay, so time to start thinking about her clothes. So I want the fur part of her jacket to be very light, like a creamy kind of color. So grabbing some of the similar colors to what was used in her skin, but I'm gonna wanna go more desaturated than her skin. So we've got, and I'll zoom out, E000. We've got 078 by Blick. So that is sand. E000 might be too, too warm. Beach by Blick. Okay, starting to see where I'm going with this. Wait. Okay using myself. All right, got my colors picked. And so we're gonna start with 095 Beach. Now I'm basically working it like I have before. So we're gonna do an all over color with our lightest. I'm also gonna leave kind of a halo of un, unrecolored, I guess, fur, which will, I think, do really well to kind of push this nighttime lighting. At least that's the hope. Might have to go in there and fix that pink again. It is kind of a weird color for a glow. I should have gone with a saturated color. Instead, I grabbed a um, RV, which was kind of a desaturated RV to begin with. All right. Then I'm gonna go in with sand. And I'm trying to do kind of like a scrubbing, stumbly sort of Thing, a lot of texture. In fact, I'll zoom in so you guys can see what I'm up to. Need to leave the glow area mostly light. 
and I'm going to have to probably go in and rework that, which is fine. Y'all would probably not believe how delighted I was when I realized that Blick Studio brush markers were really pretty good. I had already done like, I don't know, 20 um, different alcohol marker reviews. I was getting really tired of how many like just boring markers were being released and that people wanted me to test. And it was just like, no, no, I'm tired of testing bad markers. Going back in with beach to try and lighten some of those areas up. And I'm gonna grab my blender and get some of those a little lighter as well. I'm losing a lot of my uh, BV shading, so I'm gonna have to go back in with that as well. All right, so I can grab sand again and just sort, sort of work it in. And if you let it fully dry, you're gonna get a um, more drastic. So if you work wet into wet, it's going to blend and absorb and mix in with the other colors. If you let it dry and then apply, it will have kind of a, a sharper contrast, make a sharper mark. And both are really useful. Of course, if you work wet into wet, you're far less likely to get any streaking, which is nice too. You know what? I'm gonna grab a much lighter RV. We're gonna grab a Neo Pico. And I think if I remember correctly, this one is also kind of hot. And that should serve my purposes a little bit better, I think. In fact, go in here. That really got bent there, didn't it? Actually, if we're being fair, these Neo Picos are probably 10 plus years old because Kabocha sent them to me and they were apparently sent to her by another artist and she used them for a long time and that other artist <laughs> used them for a long time. So, you know, it's not surprising that it's starting to, starting to show its age, starting to look a little long in the teeth. Happy that it worked for as long as it does. Okay, now that feels kind of dry. Gonna go, oh, you know what I actually wanna do? I want to grab BB00, I guess. And let's knock in some nice cast shadows. Or let's get down to business. I don't wanna say it too accurately. Don't wanna get in trouble. And then we'll grab taupe. Taupe is not actually as dark as I thought it would be. Kind of want to get a brown and like really knock some shadows in there. Let us try E34. That might be a little warm. Maybe we can use that on the areas facing the light, and then maybe we can use a blue-violet on the areas that would be far away from the light. So next we need to decide what color we want to do her jacket, and that's probably going to affect what color we do her scarf. And I kind of want to do something dark and kind of woolly and wintry. So maybe a dark blue, since we've got so much purple, a blue might actually stand out nicely. So I'm gonna do what I do and I'm gonna do some swatching. Definitely also want to give myself room to maneuver. So I'm gonna pick a few different colors. And since we're going blue, I'm actually gonna grab a few purples from my Prismacolor set, since those tend to be really good for shading intense sort of blues. 
Just having a little bit of trouble finding the right one. I may not even own the right one yet. Yeah, it looks like I just don't. So we're just gonna have to make the best of what we've got with what we've got. Although, let's see. Do I have anything that would work in blue violet that I haven't already pulled out? Hmm. Maybe. Nope. <laughs> I was all hopeful. That's all right. I've got slate and I've got ink blue that we can always end up with. Oh, and I want a really light or a much lighter warm blue now that I think about it. Am I even gonna be able to find one with what Prismacolor has? Because I've got, I've got those glows to think about and I need to have somewhere to go with that. So let's try a couple of really light blues. That might work. That'll be better though. And then hidden away, almost where I can't find it, is something. Hmm. I guess so. I'll use that to blend out. And we're gonna start with cerulean. Well, no, actually, I wanna start with stratospheric blue, blend out with cerulean blue and then blend out that with pale blue. And since I want nice blends, I'm going to try and work wet into wet. <laughs> Not quite what I had in mind. So, that's okay. I'll just keep working at it. The thing about a blue like this is it's such an intense blue that it can often be kind of difficult to work up to it. So, takes a little bit of practice, but that's okay. Supposedly, practice makes perfect. The supposedly, there is no real such thing as perfect, just good enough. So practice makes good enough, I guess. I'm 100% though, not digging that. Let's see what we can do. See if that will help kind of desaturate it and make it look a little bit more like a light effect and not like, I don't know, just like random uh, green on the coat. Really not feeling that. Let's see what we can do. It's a little bit better. Then I'll just go ahead and where's that Neo Pico Pink? Maybe that'll work a little bit better than what I was doing. Then we'll do another layer with the Strato Blue. And then we'll slide on over to Iris now that we've kind of gotten our colors figured out. Um, I don't even think I'm gonna bother to go over it and try to blend it. Leave it like it is, I think. And then what, Ranger Indigo? Actually, I wanna go ahead and do my Go ahead and do my purple, rather my BB. So we've got slate, I do believe. And that way I can blend this out a little bit with 
I guess it's iris? No. It's indigo, sorry. So since she's also backlit, I'm sort of doing it at the core of the forms. Oh no, I wanted to do it with indigo. Grab the wrong color. And indigo is kind of interesting because like with real indigo, it will actually kind of like slough off under your hand. So after I scan this, it's going into a protective archival bagging. All right. Go back over with strato blue since it's a little streakier than I wanted. Some strato blue there. And I think, I think that's her jacket. Her jacket's a little bit psychedelic looking actually. So that is an interesting side effect. Now I need to decide a color either for her shirt or for her scarf, maybe red for her scarf. So what do I want to do with her shirt? And what do I want to do with that bead? And sometimes I will default and dress Kara in like primary colors, which is not, not always a cute look. Um, and that is because I might actually do her shirt white so go ahead and fill the whole thing in with a really light blue then i'm going to add some serious shadowage with b01 and I'll probably go back over it again with that BV. Let's see, do I want to do it with BV00 or do I want to go a little bit darker and do it with BV23? And I'm just going to do it where there would be cast shadow. Hopefully that doesn't look too weird. No, I want DG00. Go back and blend some areas. Let that hot mess dry before. Oh, actually, what I want to do for sure. It's a little bit of blue and I might go with yellow or something. I don't know. Let's go ahead and get started and see what we end up with. Ooh, I kind of, I'm so tempted to do intense, but I should really not do intense because it is a dark, a dark image, a dark setting. So we've also got Well, we're gonna start with our normal yellow. So we're gonna start with Y02. Then we'll do a little bit of blending up there. Let's zoom in, zoom in for you guys. And I don't want it to blend perfect, so I'm gonna give it a chance to evaporate. Okay, that's had a chance to try, dry. Now going in with Blick Honey Yellow. And I'm gonna have to reestablish that blue. And then I'll give that a chance to dry as well. And then we're going to do just a little bit of Blick Antique. So I think on her shirt, I'm gonna do, I guess, green dots and maybe do the cord on her, on her uh, bead green as well. 
I still gotta figure out something to do with the scarf. Maybe I'll do the scarf yellow too. Maybe I shouldn't have put those yellows away. So, of course you'll know that means it's watching time. So I grabbed a handful of greens. Ooh, you need to refill my beer. I think that will work quite nicely. And I'm going to start with G24. I'm only gonna do just a little hint of it inside the yellow bead. And go ahead and do the dots on her shirt. And then finally, I didn't read the greens. I'm so sorry. I started with G24, then G05, G17, and now G28. Not that I, when I'm watching other people's marker videos, their color choices doesn't matter. Like knowing the exact colors, it's more like approximately and why they use what they use. And then, Need to grab those yellows again. And I'm picking yellows because we have, well, we also have some yellow highlights too. Hmm, maybe a red, because there's no pink in there yet. I'm trying to make it so that the, uh, the glow effects that we've done stand out against the colors we've picked. At least to an extent, I know there's not always not always working so well for me. So I guess red is the color that we're looking for. But let's grab some nice darker red since it's got a lot of colors going on today. And we'll grab a pinkish red. Just I want something much lighter than that. Let me grab this. And you guys know what the drill is. Switch, swatch, swatchy swatch. And I'm putting it away as I go. Actually, I want this one instead. And that way I don't have to clean it up later. I'm working with kind of extremely limited space here. So, keeping my stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I really like that color and it's like, oh, that would work. But it doesn't really work with what I'm going for. And now I'm gonna grab a red violet or a couple of red violets maybe. Because red can be one of those that it's kind of hard to shade. So we've got our colors grabbed. And since Kara is only seven inches tall, you would really be able to see the individual threads of a knitted scarf. So I wanna maintain that by using strokes that kind of reflect that heart shape knitting pattern. I'm gonna have to fix that blue. And the yellow, it's okay. You can always push colors back with colorless blender. And the blue violet that I used on this isn't really influencing the red at all, so I'm gonna have to go in and uh, reestablish that with a darker blue violet since we're using blue violet to sort of indicate our night. And then before I get too much further, I'm gonna make even more of a mess and grab my colorless blender and try to push some of these colors back a little bit so I can put down the original color again. So... We want the wrong side of the yellow. 
yellow to start with. And I may have to go into this with colored pencils and really tighten up the globe. All right. Now we're gonna do another layer of red. R27 Cadmium Red. And then I'm gonna draw in little red strings, or rather, you know, like yarn bits, sort of cutting in on that glow. Hopefully that'll work. Next, Neo Pico Y558. <laughs> Man, those glows are really weird <laughs> on the scarf. Oh, <laughs> let's see what I can do to fix it. Let's grab a salmon red. Salmon run, salmon red, oh no. I mean, it's not worse, but it's not better. It's okay. Often I am just learning along with you guys. I mean, I know a few things about doing glow effects from watercolor and a lot of them are applicable to markers. And I know a few things about markers and marker solvents and what will get what effects, but every now and then, I'm not super great at, at certain things, let's just say that. So I'm using R39. At least I did a really good job of kind of capturing the texture of the scarf. And what's so funny is I have the hardest time doing this in black and white, but it's so much easier for me to think about texture and material and color. In black and white, my brain just kind of draws a blank. All right, so I want to use BV23 and I'm going to start, this may not be dark enough either, but it will desaturate it a little bit, which is good. There we go. Sort of toning down the middle section that would be curving away from the light. Now it's not quite as much as I'd like, so I'm gonna go in with slate Slate's a little darker than I expected, so I'm going to kind of reserve that for my darkest areas. Now I am gonna go back over this with a couple of other colors and that's gonna help blend a lot of that out. But I still want to be prudent with where I place it. And then Blick 046 Dark Umber. So uh, pro probably for like every six Copic markers I have, I have a Blick Studio brush marker. And I would have more of them, except I had already amassed a lot of Copic markers by the time the Studio brush markers came out. So they are definitely my number one recommendation. If you're interested, if you're like seriously interested in alcohol markers, um, they're very affordable. They perform very similarly to Copic markers. Unlike some of the other cheap alcohol markers on the market, which don't even handle the same way. I mean, you'll learn about alcohol links a little bit, but it's gonna be just frustrating in my opinion and really unsatisfying. And I know there are artists who can make those work. So I'm not trying to slam them for using them. I'm just saying, if you're asking me, my preference would be for the Blick Studio Brush Markers for affordable alcohol markers, that is. I'm trying to make it look like there's individual threads in there. And I turn my paper a lot. Hope y'all aren't getting seasick. All right, that's a scarf. Wait, wait a minute. Did we just basically finish this thing? <sighs> That's, I guess that's a good problem to have. Cause I was like, wait, what? I thought we were so far from being done. And yet here we are. Gonna use a little bit of BB23 in the yellow 
on her bead and then also on the string and I'm gonna knock some darker shadows in where her scarf would cast a shadow and some darker shadows here. Okay, so that went kind of quick. I'm actually going to go grab my, I'm gonna use the Crayola color pencils and we'll have some fun with those now. So I've got the Crayola Artist color pencils. Um, they are now known as the Signature Blend in Shade color pencils. They have a nice sort of creamy pour to them. And I'll place them there where you can see the color. And I, I know I said I was gonna do this and I'm going to do this, but it's like, do I even have the colors I wanted? And we're just going to, emanating from the center, we're gonna go over a little bit and you might be better at blending than I am because I'm terrible at blending. And mixed media is totally a legitimate way to do glow effects. And using color pencils with your alcohol markers is also a legitimate way to get a lot more bang for your buck. In fact, I have a friend who does this really cool thing and I'm trying to get her to do a tutorial and if she won't do it, I'll just have to, I'll just have to do a demonstration because she uses Crayola color pencils, like not even the gel core one or the oil core ones like I'm using here, but just like normal Crayola color pencils. And she does, uh, she starts with alcohol markers and then she does color pencil on top of it to greatly increase the range of colors she has available. And it looks, I mean, her work is beautiful and I will, I know this is a super long video. I will remember to link her art in the description so you guys can go check it out. And her Insta handle is Ricky Rinka. And I, <laughs> see, I told you I really did like your, the way you were doing it. I wouldn't be mentioning it if I didn't. Um, anyway, I, I think that is a really, really clever use. And I mean, I know using color pencils on top of alcohol markers is not uncommon, but this, this person does like a flat and then uses color pencils for all the shading. So you really could get away with like maybe even just 10 alcohol markers in your entire collection. So at least this is doing a better job influencing the color and I can even, for some of them, use the alcohol marker to sort of blend it a little bit and also just re continually reinforce the color we used. And then I'm also going to kind of pop them in. Fortunately, I don't really have a green in my set that will work for that. And it doesn't necessarily want to go over super well on this very slick paper. I'm using mixed media paper in case you guys can't, don't remember, I guess, because I did mention it. Now I see an area of her face that's going to kind of bother me. So I'm going to grab E51 and very carefully just kind of knock that back a little bit, round her face a little bit. And then other than like white gouache and white highlights, I think this is about done. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. As always, it's a pleasure. And I hope 
we covered a lot of different methods for glow effects that will be helpful and useful to you in your marker art. If you want to see something covered in more detail, specifically, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to try and get on that. I can be a little slow with these videos only because we send them to someone else. We pay someone to edit for us. So we are literally employing someone in our local community to edit video, which is, you know, I, it makes me happy that we're able to help someone out. And, uh, so sometimes it takes just a little bit longer for things to get edited because they have to go through a few people's hands. I'm gonna go grab some white gouache. But I do read your comments. I do take your requests very seriously. And I love being able to fill them. So I'm gonna use some bleed proof white. And you guys know me, always the daredevil. I think I might try and use a water brush. That is if I have any water brushes with water in them. No, I don't. So I guess that's what I gotta go do. Okay, so I grabbed some PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. This is kind of my first time, I think, trying it with a water brush, especially this water brush. This water brush is a little bit drippy. So we might be entering the land of regrets. Actually, I can better mix things in the cap. Here we go. This might not work because it wants to be stubborn until you've added too much water and then it's like goosh. But I'm so lazy, guys. But my laziness might be a punishment. All right, fine. I'm not gonna fight you. So, I'm gonna put a bunch of water in the cap and use a regular actual factual brush and dab up some of those blobby lines. And you can use white gouache for this. You can use Copic opaque white. Actually, hmm. yeah, falling. I have an opaque white kit. So I've got another glow trick that I'd forgotten. This is the white blender. So it is a pigment based white marker that puts down a very, very faint layer of white. So it can be really good for building up these glows. And I'm gonna have to clean it because it wants to dissolve my color pencil, which is no surprise. This uses a different type of alcohol than um, your typical alcohol marker. So it's not going to blend your alcohol marker. It's not gonna dissolve your alcohol marker. It's just going to slowly add a little bit of white. So it can be used to build up a sort of glow effect as well. I used to use this thing in conjunction with my markers all the time. I've been so busy with watercolor stuff. And another thing that's neat about opaque white, if I haven't mentioned it, is it can be built up. So I have like a base layer down. Actually, I want a little more on her cheeks. And I don't want too much in her eyes because I don't want it to look like, I don't want it to lose that glowy look. I want it to just look a little more lit up. And I'm gonna have to remember to keep cleaning because it will pick up my color pencil. I'd forgotten about this. Don't y'all like how I basically done my sign out? 
or most of my sign out and then I was like, oh yeah, I have other secret hidden tricks that I'd forgotten about because it's been a really long time and I've been using other materials that don't necessarily work super well with this. Now, it is an opaque white, so it's going to knock your colors down in intensity a little bit as you build it up. So I wouldn't rely on it too, too much, especially like in the eyes where a cloudy look is not a good look. <laughs> cloudy look is not a good look in the eyes, guys. Top dating tip, don't, don't go on a date with a cloudy look in your eyes. but it is useful for like what we just did. And then, I mean, you can also use white color pencils. You can use uh, white watercolor pencils and then blend that out. You can use Copic Signo. You can use, actually, why am I? You can use all of these things or any of these things. But next, I'm gonna grab a Recollections opaque paint marker, which is kind of similar in that it doesn't put down like a shocking amount of white. That's a little more subtle than the white correctional fluid I was using, which I'm gonna pick up again. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna end up uh, overworking. This is what's gonna happen. That is the story of my life. All right, I feel like I've wrecked plenty of damage. Okay, now some YR14 back over some of this since I went too far. Make sure also, if you're doing this, you clean off the tips of your markers because they are going to end up picking up a lot of that white stuff whatever you're using and make sure it's dried. And I should also caveat that you might risk ruining your markers that way, but if you clean your nibs, it's not likely to happen. Okay, so I think for my own sanity and the good of this piece, let's call it done. This was a long tutorial. I appreciate you guys sticking with me, hanging out with me, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys have a great day, and hopefully we can hang out again soon and work on more fun marker pieces. So, bye guys.